It's a good thing you're here because you're not going to want to miss this one. Before we get started, please hit that subscribe button. Only 10% of you are subbed and it helps me out a ton when you do. Today, by popular demand, we're looking at the battle-tested Micro Yeti V2. Originally, I wasn't going to share this base. I was just going to continue using it in my own wipes, but there have been so many comments that I can't ignore. I've been playing exclusively out of this base with Disfigure, Coma, Blueprint, Falcon, and a handful of other friends, and every single time our wipe goes amazing. This base is incredibly cheap for what you get. There's a ton of storage space. It's super Super defendable in an online raid and actually has good offline raid protection as well. Plus this base is super expandable and easy to build which makes it the absolute go-to base for us. If you're like us, you'd rather spend your time playing Rust and not just building your base and farming the entire wipe. That's you, the Micro Yeti V2 is your next base. Taking a look at our build cost and upkeep, you can see we save a significant amount of stone and metal compared to the original Micro Yeti. This is also reflected in the footprint. As you can see, it's tiny and will fit just about anywhere you need it to. Just keep in mind an external TC goes off the top and bottom of what you see here. We'll start off our base tour, as always, with the Mini Satori and Mr. Man style external TC. Here's the upkeep and there are two of these. Placing a twig roof right here will disconnect the TC, so in the event that you get raided, you're able to replace your main TC. We can reconnect it just as easily. Coming in our very simple gatehouse, you can see we have great angles into our compound. Coming off to the right here or the left, you can see we have a couple of bedroom pods that also have turrets in the bottom. Bedroom pods fit two beds, a locker, and a couple small boxes if you want them. They also have breach peaks both inside and outside of the compound. Coming into our mini china wall, you can see that we have some walls up here on the wide gap foundations that give us additional respawn points as well as some breach peaks back into the compound. Making our way into our starter airlock, you can see some furnaces, a workbench, as well as enough storage space to last you the early game. Here we have our main TC upkeep. Our second floor is just an additional storage floor, or you could use this for utility items as well. Third floor is where we'll spend most of our wipe. We have our T3 workbench, as well as a couple of these vending machines tucked into the honeycomb. Our fourth floor is just a bedroom and battery floor. We've got beds, lockers, an additional vending machine, and batteries that are actually honeycomb from the side, so they're 23 rockets and a side pummel. We can exit out to the shooting floor from either side of the bedroom, and you can see a mix of wide gaps, free-handed peaks, and breach peaks. These give you nearly infinite angles, and you can see basically everything inside of your compound. These breach peaks are super useful once your walls are actually breached, so then you can jump down here and see people that are trying to get inside your base. Above those breach peaks, we have some roof peaks as well, and coming up to the roof, you can see it's wide open, and we have perfect access to all of those same peaks that we had in the shooting floor. We also have a couple of vending machine bunkers up here, which are 15 rockets each. And all of that makes up the Micro Yeti V2. A substantial improvement in every way to the original Micro Yeti. I'm super excited to announce that alongside Disfigure, I'm now a co-owner of a totally community-driven skin marketplace called Skin Serpent. We're working with our team to build an awesome platform for you to buy, sell, and trade your skins with the best prices on the market. We've also been giving away thousands of dollars worth of skins on our Discord server, so make sure you check out the link in the description to enter for your chance to win every single day. We can't wait to launch the site, but until then, let's get back to the video. We'll start off by securing our build location by placing down three triangles like this. Go ahead and wall them in, place a ceiling on it, and then a double door frame in the entry. Line up a TC on this foundation like you see and make sure to code lock it or key lock it. We can throw starter items in here like a couple of small boxes and sleeping bags. But very quickly we'll want to expand this out by putting a 2x1 and honeycomb on the other side. We'll also put a triangle here, which will be our jump up. To the right of that goes a single doorway, and then we can wall in the rest of the perimeter. After we've got this, we'll put a ceiling on all of the tiles except for the jump up. Put a single door on facing outwards, because this is where our single door airlock will go. Build a half height jump up above you, and then seal that off with a double door.
Now you can either use a half height shelf here or you can just use three furnaces as a jump up. We can wall in this main loot room and put a shelf in the middle of it. And then you can put three more furnaces here when you get them. Next to these furnaces goes our tier 1 and tier 2 workbenches. Then we'll slap six boxes down in this main loot room. At this point we can take our starter door off, get rid of our bags and these small boxes, and make sure to upgrade your TC room as soon as possible. We'll put a window frame over it and then a half height shelf. This gives us more room for boxes. You can see that the TC is still easily accessible. Just keep in mind we'll still want another double door frame here so you will have to pick these boxes up once you get a garage door. Replace each of your sleeping bags on the ground in this main square and you're good to go. You can slap down double door frames on each one of these sockets once you get garage doors. The last thing we'll do here is come to our front door and create a single door airlock by just slapping down a triangle foundation here and walling it in. Place a single door on the front and we're good to go. Our starter base is complete. From this point on, I'm going to be upgrading and building everything in its final grade, so just keep in mind you can do this whenever you have the resources available. We'll start by HQMing our entire TC section along with the loot room next to it. The square loot room and everything else in the starter base will just get sheet metal. We'll also upgrade these single doors to armored doors. Our mobility chute will also get sheet metaled, but honestly in real wipes I end up HQMing the whole thing. We'll pick up these boxes and then spam garage doors down on all of the remaining sockets. Again, I don't expect you to have the resources right at the starter point. This is just how it'll look in the end. We'll also use an armored window and a horizontal window embrasure to go over the TC. The last part is just to upgrade the door on our jump up. There we go, everything is the final grade. Next we'll locate our airlock and go to the opposite side of it to begin our honeycombing. Place a triangle foundation off of every side of the base. Once you're done placing the foundations, it should look like this. Coming under the roof makes it really easy to place all of this honeycomb down. And keep in mind, you don't necessarily need these triangles on here, but that's up to you. Next, we can wall in our second floor and add a roof to it. Coming to our mobility chute, we'll add another half height jump up with a garage door on top. On the inside, we can make a square loot room in the middle and then a two triangle loot room on either side of it. Keep in mind, you don't have to make this middle part a loot room. Uh, one of the things that I usually do, honestly, is put mixing tables here. And we'll go ahead and slap double door frames down on every available socket and get garage doors in those bad boys. If you want to fit three mixing tables in the square, upgrade the frame to sheet metal and then it'll let you place the third one. With our second floor done, we can go ahead and honeycomb this floor as well.
Just like that, we have two fully honeycomb floors. To protect our build location from griefers, we'll start building our external TCs now. First, we'll locate this triangle on either side of the base and pick one to start. Place down a triangle and three squares off of it. Delete the first two squares in the triangle and then build back with triangles. These three will upgrade to sheet metal. Go ahead and destroy your twig buildup and then place a square off of the three triangles with another three triangles at the end of it. These left ones will get upgraded to sheet metal and the right one to stone. The square doesn't actually have to stay here, but I like to upgrade it to wood for mobility. Place a window frame and a door frame next to each other in these grades. Off of our gatehouse, build one half moon with a square on the end of it. After that, three triangles, and this is where our external TC will live. We'll upgrade this triangle to sheet metal that lines up with the sheet metal window. Use two half walls on the back of this so the disconnectable method works. Place your external TC in here and lock it. We'll put a window over it for now for three rockets of early raid protection. Stone the other two foundations here and wall them in. We'll add a single door frame and another window here to give us a total of seven rockets of raid protection to this external TC. Next, we'll place the following floor frames to reconnect our external TC to our gatehouse. Coming to our wide gap foundations, we'll place a double door frame and then a single door frame on our gatehouse. We'll reconnect these two with a floor frame as well. We'll finish building the gatehouse by adding windows here and a ceiling on top. If you face both of these single doors inward, it'll actually create an airlock. If you're playing solo or maybe duo, that could be useful. However, if you're playing with more people, it might just get in the way. To finish the gatehouse, we'll add half height floors here with three triangles on top. To place a barricade on top of that. We'll put twig on either side, place our barricades, and then remove the twig. Lastly, we'll put a turret under this section, and our gatehouse is complete. Repeat the same steps on the other side of the base, and you've got two external TCs. At this point in your wipe, you're going to want to get your compound down so you can get large furnaces rolling. Come to the remaining two sides of the base and place a square and two triangles here. We'll create these to sheet metal and delete the square. Use this low wall right here to reconnect these triangles back to the main base so they don't decay. We'll place a square and a triangle off of this and upgrade the triangle to wood. This is just for mobility. We'll build our bed pod right off of this by just building a hexagon with the back triangles raised. Using half height walls and floor tiles, we can finish off the raised part in the front. Use half walls and window frames here to create a breach peak that looks out of your compound. Two more window frames and a double door frame look inward. And we'll place a ceiling on the entire thing and use some low walls to seal up this ladder peak. Place your garage door or double door on here now, and then place windows into these three sockets. Embrasures go on either side. Place a locked locker against this back wall, just pulling it off slightly. Make sure all of your teammates get code lock on this before you seal it, and to test if it's pulled far enough out, place one roof tile down here. If you can't access it, pick it up and move it forward a little bit more. You should be able to access it through the roof just like this. Again, make sure all of your teammates have auth on this before you seal it off with the other roof tile. This is a very space efficient way to fit a locker into this shape. And then put two beds in here as well as a couple small boxes for sealing materials or additional kits. Remember you can place turrets on all three of these spots below. We'll finish off this pod by adding barricades to the top of it so people can not easily ladder over. This unit will decay if we don't reconnect it back to the main base because these foundations don't actually connect. To fix this, we'll add half floors with windows on top of them to create a breach peak on these foundations. On top of that, we'll use two floor frames to reconnect the pod to the breach peak. 
Then we have the low wall that reconnects to the main base, which means that all of these pieces won't decay and they're successfully connected. To build the compound for our base, we'll come to each of the gatehouses and place this twig triangle down. This will prevent us from angling this wall in too far, blocking us from building the shooting floor later. Come to the bed pod and line this wall up straight on. Finally, the third wall in each section should snap right in place. We'll repeat this on the right side by adding the triangle in, placing our wall down, going to the bed pod, lining it up straight, and then snapping the final piece in. Just like that, we have a perfect compound every single time. So craft up 12 high wood walls and get to compounding. Your large furnaces have to go in a very specific spot so they don't block the shooting floor. We'll come to this first wall off of each bed pod and push it tight against the corner. You can do that on either side for a total of four of these furnaces. You can still build the entire shooting floor with these furnaces in place. Next we'll build our main living space. This is where you'll live most of your wipe out of. Head up to your roof and then wall in the entire perimeter. Once you're done with that, locate these two triangles on either side of your jump up. We'll start by sealing them with a roof and then adding a single doorway to them. And we can go ahead and seal the rest of the honeycomb in. At this point, we'll follow the interior layout of the floor before, and you can optionally HQM all of this when you get the resources. Next we'll place half height shelves, and these can just be in stone. We'll then get double door frames on every one of the sockets, and the main square section we can place our garage door first. We'll need to place this before we put our tier 3 workbench down because it blocks the placement. Upgrade this frame to sheet metal for easier placement of items. Place your tier 3 just like this, and then we can put boxes in the following configuration. After the bottom layer is done, go ahead and put a triangle right here, upgrade it to stone, and then place a couple more boxes on top of it. Just like that, we have a ton of storage and a tier 3 workbench all in one square. Feel free to lay out the two triangle loot rooms on either side however you like. You can fit small boxes here as well. Coming over to these single door frames, I'm going to start by upgrading the floor of each of these to HQM because they're susceptible to splash damage from the outside. Then we'll go ahead and place a door on it, either sheet or armored, and wiggle a vending machine into there until it places. Make sure to disable broadcasting on these, but these give you a fairly secure way to add more storage to this loot room without sacrificing honeycomb. These cost 9 rockets to break, and if raiders blow through that side, they'll actually despawn the loot that's inside of it. After we get both of those down, we'll come to our jump up and seal the top of it with whatever grade door we have. And just like that, we have our main living space. Next up, we'll build out our fourth floor bedrooms. Come to the triangle opposite of your jump up and wall in a single door frame just like we did on the floor below. Come to this triangle and put a single door frame as well as a window, and then find the opposite side and do the same. It should look just like this. Then we can go ahead and wall in the honeycomb and the inner walls for each of these sections. Keep in mind this one can be HQM because this is where our batteries go. Also make sure to HQM the ceiling above that one. I forgot in this part, but you can do it at any time. We'll wall in the honeycomb on the other side as well.
Now you can see we have a symmetrical bedroom here that holds two batteries, a couple of lockers, plenty of beds. Here we can window our batteries in and then spam garage doors down on all sockets. This vending machine is an awesome spot to keep HV rockets, a launcher, extra kits, or anything else that you might need during an online raid. Keeping your beds and kits high up and out of the way helps ensure that during an online raid, the bottom of the base will get pummeled while the top of it sticks around. You want to make sure that you always have respawns and you always have a way to get to your shooting floor. Because if you can respawn, you can defend. Also, if your group are some absolute giga chads, make sure you just HQM the whole ceiling above this section. It'll help protect from MLRS and it'll definitely discourage top down raiding. Now that we have our bedroom floor in place, it's time to build a shooting floor up to it. Come to each of your wide gap sections and then start by placing a twig triangle in a twig square off of each side like this. Make sure you do the same on the other side as well. We'll start off by placing these low walls facing the gatehouse. Line your cursor up right on this section, and you'll see that the blue highlight flips back and forth when you're right on the middle. Delete these two walls without moving your mouse at all, and then only using your S key, take a step backwards until you're as far back as you can get while it's still being placeable. Put a square there, and then build a square and two triangles off of it. When you place this double door frame, the stability should be 78 to 79% if you've done it right. At this point, you're free to upgrade these two foundations and then delete the twig. We'll repeat the same process on the other three sides of the base. Place the low walls facing the gatehouse, line your cursor up on this middle triangle, delete the two low walls without moving your mouse, and then back up a step. You might have to go back forward again just like you saw me do there, that's no problem as long as you don't move your mouse. Again this frame is at 79% which is perfect. Upgrade these and delete the twig. Go ahead and do that on the other side and you've successfully finished all of the foundations for your shooting floor. The hard part is out of the way. Coming to each of our wide gap sections, we can start by building frames up three high. We can then wall in this front section, put another set of frames here, and then half walls on top of it. We'll then come to each of the four free-handed sections and start by placing a wall with two frames on top of it. Each of the two breach peak sections will just get roofs like this. And place our embrasures in here as well, and then place one frame on top of each side. Again, coming to another freehand section, we'll place down a wall with two frames on top. And then repeat the same thing on the other side. You can place stone roof tiles on top of each one of these sections to give them a little more privacy. This can help if there's a raid base or something looking down into your compound. It'll give you more cover to seal your base with. Also, feel free to put double doors or garage doors on any of these sections, put sleeping bags, locker kits, or small boxes with seal mats in them. To finish our shooting floor off, we'll come up to our bedroom floor and place these floor tiles off of the main base. Off of each of the two wide gap sections, we'll start by placing down all six of these windows and also finish the top with some roofs. I'm using a mixture of horizontal embrasures and glass windows here so we have visibility out but we won't get shot in the ankles as we're running around our shooting floor. Place these double door frames here and ceiling tiles on top of them, finish it off with a couple more embrasures. On each of the four free-handed sections, we'll use a mixture of half walls and window frames. Place triangle roofs on the top, and then use this double door frame with a couple of ceilings to finish off each of these sections. We'll place these squares off of the main base and then come down into our breach peak. Four windows go on each of the breach peak towers and we'll finish it off with triangle roofs. After doing that, place these four ceiling tiles and then finish the breach peak off with these low walls. Jumping up, we can place a single door and a double door frame next to each other to act as a roof peak and roof mobility. Then finish off the remaining free-handed sections and we're good to go. Then repeat the same thing on the other side, as you can see symmetry has already done that for me. 
And what we'll do is hop up onto our roof and finish off all of these roof tiles so then everything is sealed up nicely. The next thing we'll do is add four turrets into these locations. The turrets placed off the wide gap actually have a wide enough gap that they see directly into the shooting floor as well and act somewhat as a shooting floor turret. Coming to each of the breach peak towers, we can finish these off by adding some window embrasures as well. Also add your garage door here, and you can feel free to leave the single door open. I usually put the roller out on the garage door so it's a little easier to close as you're running away from it. Our vending machine bunkers are super easy to build, just put some twig low walls here and shove a vending machine right back into the middle. Get rid of the twig low walls and create an armored wall in front of it. As you can see, if you do it right, you won't be able to access the vending machine from the sides or top, but simply placing a piece of twig right here will allow you to get the contents of it. These can be used as drone accessible shops or you can store some loot in them overnight. The last thing we'll do on the roof is create a windmill tower right in the middle. You can feel free to add as many towers as you need. You can build them off of externals as well. It's totally up to how much power you need. And just like that, you've successfully built the Micro Yeti V2. I really appreciate you if you made it this far in the video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you have a ton of great wipes out of this base. Like I said in the beginning, I've been playing out of this base with my friends constantly and we all love it. Make sure you stop by my Discord, say hi, and submit your bases for base reviews. I'm going to start streaming on Twitch here soon after this video is up and i just love to hear from you guys more we have almost 4,000 members in there but i'm sure you guys are going to blow it away soon and like always please drop a like and a sub if you enjoyed this video it takes a ton of time to make these and i absolutely battle test these bases we've been living out of this thing for months and months and had a ton of great memories in it anyways i'll catch you guys in the next one really sick and you'll like it.